Um, so Alan already uh, summarized very well of the status of the both uh, theory side as well as experimental side. So I can just kind of quickly add up a few more points and get into the, uh, some of the, my view. I don't have to uh, tell you about these uh, 2D materials, the Van der Waals interfaces, but one interesting point is that there are a whole slew of the different type of the 2D materials, and then uh, one can build up this, uh, the uh, Van der Waals heterostructures. Uh, when we build up uh, these heterostructures, we can choose the different materials, or very similar material, even the same materials with a different angle, but the phase space that we can explore in this type of system is really, really vast. Right. And especially if you start to include this uh, different angle that which can engineer the model lattice. Basically, in some sense, without theory guide, what uh, Alan did um, uh, some years ago, eight years ago, uh, uh, to just kind of where we have to look for, uh, often the experimentalist at this point is really clueless where do we have to really uh, take the look at something. What are the, the interfaces we have to look at it? And now what is the angle that uh, could be interesting thing we can just look at it. So I think in, in, <clears throat> in that regard, this uh, combination and theory or more precisely the theory guided experiment plays kind of quite important role uh, in this field of the uh, Van der Waals interface and uh, more the super lattice uh, application. Um, the, Probably the, the first demonstration of this Amore super lattice uh, do some things comes in uh, the very first demonstration, the graphene on boron nitride, uh, which appears about kind of seven or eight years ago. Um, it, I see the uh, echoes, but hopefully that's, yeah. And then um, the, that simple system even lead into the uh, quite interesting problems such as Hofscher's butterfly uh, seemingly just based on the, uh, uh, the competition between the periodic model lattice that engineered something like about uh, uh, 10, 10 nanometer length scale uh, with magnetic field whose magnetic lengths are again, that can be about 10 nanometer length scale. And that's where that natural, the competition of the two different length scale plays kind of quite important role. Now, uh, of course, uh, the field get uh, really get excited uh, uh, two years ago that when uh, uh, Pablo's group at MIT showed that uh, at the right at the magic angle that Alan, uh, what Alan predicted that eight years ago, that shows indeed uh, some of this correlated insulating behavior that uh, stemming from the very uh, flat band formations, what theory precisely expected. Even more so that uh, quite unexpectedly that when you uh, dope this uh, flat band uh, system and move away slightly from this correlated insulating region, the sample becomes superconductor and that's quite unexpected and uh, uh, therefore they're very exciting, uh, the new efforts started happens, right? Um, I would say that within two and two and a half years of the time uh, uh, past now, I think uh, the, the right now the field is really kind of expanding rapidly. I, I just collect kind of some of these experimental papers that I can uh, quickly uh, search through. Uh, of course, in uh, twisted by layer alone, uh, the magic angle twist by uh, layer alone, not only correlate insulator, but superconductor. Alan mentioned that there's a magnetisms, quantum anomalous Hall effect has been seen in those kinds of system. And then uh, this, uh, the people quickly search the beyond this uh, twisted bilayer, for example, the tri-layer system, uh, where the flat band appears, either aligned with the boron nitride, not aligned boron nitride. This tri-layer system also shows the, uh, uh, the, the correlated insulating behavior, superconducting behavior, as well as some of the quantum or loss of hole type of the behavior. And there's a, also the, not only the magic angle twisted bilayer, uh, but you can just put the two bundle stack, the uh, graphene layer to form so-called this uh, twisted double bilayer. And there has been also demonstration, uh, the correlated insulating behavior, uh, plus that uh, some sort of spin polarizations of the decorrelate gap and potential the superconductivities and those kind of thing has been reported by uh, many research, uh, many experimentalist group. And also Alan, as, uh, Alan, as Alan mentioned, uh, now that uh, not only graphene like the system, that uh, system get expanded into the, the uh, TMDC and TMDC, the transition metal dichar collagenized system, either homojunction or uh, the heterostructures with a very similar lattice parameter. There has been uh, quite an exciting uh, the report, uh, such as uh, correlated insulators, uh, 
that Wigner crystal formations and all this type of things actually starting up here in um, this Van der Waals twisted layer system. Another interesting aspect of the uh, experimental side of this uh, twisted uh, uh, bilayer system is that uh, not only transport measurement, but other experimental tool, especially the scanning probe can be readily accessible. So there has been already a couple of the STM work that's showing the, uh, the, this, the interesting electronic structures in coordinations with the atomic registries in um, uh, the, the magic angle twisted bilayer or close to there. Uh, couple of STM work as well as a scanning probe work to show this uh, local compressibilities measurement as well as a local uh, field dependence measurement by the scanning screen shows this uh, the uh, the electronics and the magnetic property in the local. I think this uh, type of the trend will go on, um, especially this local property plays quite important role. And also Alan briefly mentioned that uh, some of the TMDC system uh, that because it's a gap to semiconductor with the uh, the gap close to the visible light, uh, uh, one can apply a lot of the optical techniques uh, that can see that uh, various optical effect, especially that extens confined or extent field is more of a pattern, uh, more of a potential, uh, plays a quite important role in past a few, uh, few months. And there are quite a lot of publication and research, research activity goes on. So I think that's probably uh, the general aspect of where that experimental status and what, what is going on in experimental land to just kind of take a look. But also we are facing quite of the challenges on the experimentalist side. And that's kind of something I want to kind of briefly share uh, using the, my own experiments as a tool that kind of uh, deliver that, uh, what is the, uh, the challenge you, uh, we as experimentalists are facing. I think uh, I heard that David Goldab Gordon is there. Uh, he, he, can, uh, he can also share the, uh, some of this view in a moment, but let me start with uh, my experiments to uh, share the idea. So I will start with this uh, phase diagram, which actually has been uh, uh, played an important role uh, a couple of times already, right? So this is uh, the very first uh, phase diagram of the density uh, versus temperature axis uh, of this uh, twisted, uh, magic angle twisted bilayer graphene um, done by the, uh, the MIT group, right? So here is a twi uh, uh, twisting angle 1.16 is 1.05. Uh, qualitatively uh, sim they're, they're quantitative difference but qualitatively similar basically that uh, it seems like the multi insulator is dividing off this uh, superconducting dome there seems like there's some sort of competitions between the insulating phase uh, correlated insulating phase as well as the superconductivity in the system now uh, the a few months later, of, uh, about a year later, I think uh, that uh, this is the, the status art of the sample that prepared by Dimitri Apatov's group that Alan showed. Uh, now, phase diagram is um, now a little bit different. Not only that uh, the one insulating regime that originally the study, the superconductivity appears in many of this side uh, of this other type of the correlated insulating regimes. Um, uh, not only a half field, the quarter field, three quarter field. Uh, there is also insulating regime appears, and nearby that insulating regime, uh, if you go down enough, that uh, there is a superconducting like the states appears in the uh, in this type of the sample. Even more so, the most recent uh, the report uh, done by uh, this one is uh, Andrea Young's group, and uh, I believe the Caltech group showed the similar things. Also, start to demonstrate it that uh, different angle, slightly away from the magic angle. And they also see the superconductivities in the low temperature. But in this particular case, there is not necessarily that right next or nearby the correlated insulating regime. So there is a, some speculation experimentally, at least in this angle of the sample, um, um, the superconductivity might be uh, the separated issues with the correlated insulator that people have seen. Now the uh, trouble here is, uh, seems like every sample looks a little bit kind of different type of the phase diagram. And there is a, the, uh, of course, as, as the sample quality progresses, we see the more of the details that could be, uh, but also kind of different angle, slightly different angle shows a kind of rather different type of the physics where the angle may not necessarily in the exact control of the, all the experimentalists, right? I think we often that target some angle and that we end up with kind of slightly different angle. We tend to study about that. So the one of the job among the experimentalists is every sample make the one uh, uh, separate phenomena and uh, separate uh, the papers out of it. Um, so the issue here is how we can control the precisely the sample we are studying. 
I think that could be, be one of the issues. It actually ties with, the, even in the one sample, uh, there's uh, kind of raises some of the issues. How well we can control the uh, angle within the sample. Of course, if the physics is really sharply tuned by the, uh, the angle of the, this twisting, in other words, that the uh, more superlaris uh, the size, uh, it must be quite important that to have this uniform uh, the distribution of this angle, at least within the one sample that we study. Well, it turns out that's probably not the case as you expected. And there is always a disorder, is including the, um, the uh, certain angle distribution. So uh, this is a paper that uh, done by the Alice Zeldox group using scanning suite. Uh, they, they image that uh, the, what is angle distributions of this close imaging angle twisted by layer sample that uh, provided by the, uh, the MIT group. And they see that, yes, it is in average close to the magic angle, but there are substantial the distribution of the angle, depends on the sample. And uh, this will just tend to create this, uh, especially when you get into the, the superconducting regime, some of this population pathway of the superconductors uh, throughout the samples. And when the population is made, then uh, the, between the voltage probe, you can read out this uh, superconductivity. But if not, then you just uh, don't uh, read it. So certainly we can imagine that uh, sample inhomogeneity plays quite important role uh, when you use the transport as a tool. And very similar experiment also shows up uh, uh, in this case that uh, scanning SAT uh, made of the nanotube uh, done by, uh, again, the Weizmann group to demonstrate this uh, imaging capability shows that the, uh, some the uh, fine distribution of the angle in the system. So uh, one way that we can get around this type of the idea is, is there a way that we can um, uh, the bring this magic, uh, the flat band, not just controlling the angle, but controlling some other parameter in the system. So there comes the, uh, one of the idea using this uh, twisted double by layer. So uh, around kind of similar times, uh, there are a few groups actually now trying out this, uh, the idea of the uh, twisted double by layer. And the idea is kind of following. So if you just think about the bundle stack by layer, just uh, the two graphene layer stack into the registry, um, the, basically, there's inversion symmetry between the lattice point. So if you just break this inversion symmetry of the burner stack by layer, in fact, you can open up the, uh, the gap into the, this uh, charge neutral point of the spectrum of burner stack by layer. And this has been demonstrated uh, by many experimental groups and by optical measurement, transport uh, measurement, uh, by applying the descent displacement field in the vertical direction of this plane, uh, one, can build, uh, one can open up the gap uh, about the size of something like the uh, even 100 millilect volt. So idea is that uh, once you just uh, stack this uh, twisted, uh, uh, the, the two burner stack by layer and make the twisting, there's a possibility that, uh, that you can just uh, create this hybrid gap. And then uh, by just applying the electric field uh, that you can probably open up the gap uh, and then control this, uh, the, uh, the size of the flat band by just uh, the controlling the displacement field. So in some sense, in this particular case, uh, you don't necessarily sharply tune the magic angle, but whatever angle that close to the uh, some uh, small angle, uh, you can use a displacement field to control this uh, band structure such that you can just control the flatness of this band. Now this simple idea, in fact, was taken a little bit more the serious uh, the calculations, including both of the displacement field and all this layer the coupling that uh, this was done by the Ashwin's group, uh, uh, then uh, the, the conclusion is following. Well, if you have something like around the 1.2 degree to the 1.3 or 4 degrees of the, this, uh, the twisting angle, um, by applying the displacement field, they're creating this, uh, the imbalance of these energies between this uh, two bonus sec by layer, which in this case control uh, the uh, parameterized U, you can isolate this uh, separate band whose bandwidth in fact controlled by this U. So somewhere around this regimes of the displacement field and the angle, you should be able to get the reasonably well isolated uh, the band with bandwidth is uh, as small as something like the tens of millilect volts. So that's basically the idea uh, behind of the this twisted double by layer. In fact, this idea uh, works. Um, the, so this is a twist by layer sample. And then here that we need the two gate and top and bottom to control both the filling and the, the, the displacement field. And you start to see that uh, in this, uh, the charge neutral point, you open up the gap, which is basically a single particle gap that uh, again, by applying the displacement field that uh, the gap opens up. 
And full field, uh, the full filling, there is also gap opens up. And again, this is a single particle effect uh, that I just mentioned uh, that uh, uh, the the Moire superlattice will create this uh, the band, uh, band folding uh, and they create the single particle gap. But interesting enough that between this uh, the uh, the neutrality with the full filling and once that you get the half filling, that this dark color means that uh, large resistivity appears. And that only appears at the finite displacement field, which actually flow in that directions, right? So this basically uh, it, uh, the appearance of the high resistance state indicating indeed that there is uh, the insulating state that we can stabilize by this displacement field in half field ranges. One can do a little bit more careful work. Uh, for example, that uh, you can just measure the size of the gap and gap in this particular case about 1.33 degrees is something like um, a few millilitres like voltage, so size of the gap appears. And you can apply it in magnetic field, they just kind of get the band mass around there. And band mass is much more enhanced by the single particle, uh, the band mass that uh, is made, estimated the uh, band structures near this, uh, the, uh, the half field gap, indicating this half field gap is indeed uh, that likely uh, the correlate gap that uh, one can get uh, similar in the magic angle twist by layer. Except that here, that in a sense, magic angle is realized by using this, uh, the displacement field as control parameters. And one can actually study about this uh, nature of the, this, uh, the, uh, the insulating gap, applying the in-plane magnetic field. It turns out when you apply the in-plane magnetic field, this half-field gap that I just mentioned becomes uh, much stronger um, the size of the gap actually increases. Not only that, previously that we didn't have anything signatures in the quarter field side, applying the in-plane magnetic field, we actually start to stabilize this uh, gap in the quarter field states. So in a sense that there is a half field gap and quarter field gap states gap appears, uh, very similar to the magic angle, uh, the twisted bilayer graphene. But in this particular case, first the gap is stabilized only with this uh, displacement field. And the gap is actually strengthened by the in-plane magnetic field, which actually increases the Zeeman effect, uh, Zeeman gaps. So from this, at least we start kind of uh, uh, contemplating that this correlated insulating gap that we have is likely the spin polarized gap. In other words, it is basically spin polarized band uh, or ferromagnetic uh, the ordering that happens uh, due to the, this, uh, the correlations uh, that we have. So that's uh, the one thing that uh, we start to see in this type of the sample. Now, natural thing we can ask is now, okay, so we start to see that this uh, gaps uh, that potentially the correlating, uh, the correlating effects. Then what if that we just kind of slightly away from this gap and dope this sample selected uh, twisted by layer graphene, uh, do we see something so unusual? Indeed, when we just kind of tune uh, uh, the our angle even smaller, such that band we become band we becomes even smaller, and indeed we start to see the very similar things again that uh, there is a halo that regimes appears uh, that where that this half field correlated insulator appears, and they turns out this half field correlated insulator is also spin polarized, and with the, this even narrow bandwidth system, when you top it, uh, we start to see that uh, system shows that uh, the superconducting like the transitions that. Uh, finite resistance uh, drops quite rapidly and get into zero resistance. And then once you get into the, this uh, zero resistance state, uh, we just measure the uh, IV and the IV shows a strong nonlinear behavior. And this nonlinear behavior uh, uh, the, with the temperature and magnetic field dependence actually clearly the, uh, the following through the, this, uh, this uh, uh, BTK type of the transition behavior. And uh, strongly suggestive that this might be related with the 2D superconductivity we measured into, the, into the, this type of the system. So that is another exciting thing. So uh, similar uh, kind of following through the very similar uh, footsteps that uh, the, the what has been showing the magic angle twist bilayer, maybe the, many of the this twist bilayer system also shows this, uh, the correlated insulating behavior and the, upon the doping this correlated insulator, maybe you may see that uh, super thing like the, uh, the behavior. Now, uh, that's uh, the exciting part, but here comes that uh, experimentalist nightmare, right? So uh, we start to explore that this system with a kind of slightly different angles, right? Uh, and uh, one of the, uh, the, uh, the motivation I mentioned is when we have the, this uh, different angle, uh, 
that in principle we can tune this uh, the uh, the displacement field to bring the the flat band into the reasonable distribution of the angle. It is true that uh, the between that 1.2 uh, to say 1.5 degree ratio of the twisting angle, we should be able to realize this uh, the correlated insulator spin polarized correlated insulator by tuning the uh, the displacement field, and that handy here shows the all the kind of demonstrations. And um, that uh, the uh, then then when we measure this uh, doped uh, the uh, correlated insulator region, we do see that uh, generality that indeed uh, in these regions that where the near this correlated insulator region, so we see that uh, the resistance drops rapidly to a very small value, uh, close to zero. But not all the samples that shows that uh, zero resistance. I have the three minutes. Is that what you're saying? Okay, five minutes left. Okay, good, thanks, yeah. So, um, and then uh, the, uh, basically uh, just one sample out, out of say five or six, six samples that we tried out shows that kind of so-called uh, zero resistor behavior. Now that we have the really kind of push into the uh, limits of whether can we really claim the superconductivity based on one sample and only the zero resistance. I think this could be that uh, equally applicable for the many other 2D system. Uh, probably magic angle twist bilayer, there are a lot of the growing evidence that uh, indeed the superconductivity observed in many different samples and including the phase equivalence behavior. But some of the other samples like this, um, the twisted uh, tungsten diselenide, uh, where that also you see the very low resistance uh, state that shows up. But it's a very, uh, the particular conditions and a few of these, uh, the gate cho uh, choices. It's not clear that whether just a zero resistance state alone that one can claim the superconductivity and uh, one should be able to see other uh, possibility in this type of the sample. So the, the problem that experimentalists uh, that face is, is there a way that we can get the, the create the homogeneous sample in the reliable way? Or is there other, type of the measurement other than transport, uh, preferentially some of the th thermodynamic type of the measurement to follow about this uh, superconductivity as well as a correlated insulator. So that's kind of the uh, one of the issues. The part of the problems that we are facing of the such a complicated behavior is indeed um, um, the part that when we stack these samples together, it's a very difficult to avoid to just the distribution of the building strains and building strain is naturally ends up with this angle modulation. This is one of the extreme case that I'm showing you that uh, uh, what happens that in the twisted bilayer sample that we target is something like the 0.5 degrees or 0.4 degrees. Uh, um, there can be quite of the distribution of the, this uh, different type of this Moara patterns, uh, which often that averaged out when you just measure it. So unless we really carefully uh, tied with the, our uh, the local the probe that seeing that what we are measuring is what we are really targeting, sometimes it can be often just the uh, uh, the confused with the uh, experimental data. I think that's kind of one of the situations. Um, but the other thing that we can mention here is often that this type of this Moara patterns formations or this uh, this uh, structure disorder kind of formation is also the opportunity for the experimentalist because this uh, in fact can be uh, analyzed in terms of the um, uh, the new type of the structures, uh, especially this Moara pattern. Um, not only the electrically, it's uh, the the fold of the band, but structure wise, that these Moara patterns can be interpreted as the uh, the combination or the junctions of the dislocation, structural dislocation line, or the two dis dislocation line, where especially in twisted bilayer, there is a topologically uh, the protective 1D mode is running through along this uh, model, uh, model lines. And it turns out that when you just kind of the, uh, the investigate this, uh, the, the dislocation line network or this uh, 2D dislocation network, uh, another way of the interpreting this uh, Moara lattice, that is strongly the topologically protected uh, the object. Let me just skip through because of time. Uh, there is a really well developed the mathematical tools. You can uh, just uh, analyze uh, this type of this um, the 2D model network in terms of this uh, dislocation network in topologies. And in that pictures, basically all this, uh, the AA site uh, is the interpreted as uh, the kind of one of this uh, vortex site. Right. And moreover, 
not only the twisting, there's a way that you can create this type of this uh, general de model lattice even further, right? Uh, you can create this uh, the vortex and anti vortex array by just uh, twisting or shearings and then uh, the isotropic uh, expansions or uniaxial uh, 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 expansions. And all of this thing created a different type of this, I would say, Moare patterns, or in other words, in, in equivalent, equivalent languages, basically network of this, uh, dislocations with different kind. And they tend to actually show uh, very different structural properties and potentially the electronic properties that are associated with that. I think uh, once we expand this, uh, our challenge is that it's a very difficult to control these uniform layers. Maybe one can also expand that our, uh, the now challenge into the opportunity. Can we study about this type of this network that, uh, that one can engineer in, into the this model? I think that's kind of one of the ongoing efforts uh, which could be quite exciting uh, directions. I know my time is up, so let me just kind of uh, close it down. Um, by the way, all these uh, things can be also controlled the, uh, the electrically as well. So I think uh, I will just kind of close it down showing this movie. And this is a movie that's showing that one can create these model patterns and put these top and bottom gates that one can control the, the displacement field. Now this is TMDC layers and in TMDC layers, uh, by the way, that uh, this all the uh, Moare domain contains their building um, the dipole moments such that when you apply the displacement field, uh, this dipole moment can be coupled with the electric field such that the domain size becomes smaller and larger, right? So especially when we're dealing with this, uh, the uh, twisted bilayer cases that uh, by applying this uh, the displacement field, not only we ch change electronic properties, but in a sense, we also change the lattice properties, uh, lattice size by just kind of this electric field. So I think that's um, the, uh, the one thing that I want to mention as a kind of another interesting opportunities. So the summing up, basically uh, experimentalist uh, that is facing the uh, exciting moments, so exploring a lot of different interfaces with a lot of different uh, uh, electronic properties, but also facing with uh, the, uh, the challenges, the how we can control the sample and how do we know that uh, what we are measuring and how we can make this kind of the control even better. All right, so um, yeah, okay. So let me just kind of skip this one. And let me thank my collaborators. I think that a major experiments part that twist the double bilayer layer that I mentioned is done by the Xiaoming Liu, now at Princeton and the J.U. Uh, Hao uh, working in the project with the theory support from the Ashvin's group and Team Capture's group. And there are a few other systems I briefly mentioned. Thank you very much. <laughs>